Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics, a podcast dedicated to exploring how things get places and the people who get them there. We'll talk with logistics and supply chain leaders about innovation, industry trends, and the future of the logistics business. Now, here is your host, Joe Lynch. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics. My name is Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's topic is Every Shipment Matters with my friend Jim Waters. How's it going, Jim? It's going good. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, Jim. So please introduce yourself and your company and where you're calling from today. Yeah, pleasure. Um, so Jim Waters, I'm the, uh, the head of global marketing for Tive. Tive is... Uh, a real-time visibility platform provider, and we help shippers, carriers, 3PLs, and logistics service providers actively track their shipments so that they arrive on time and in full, because as you know, um, it's all about getting all your stuff uh, on time and not busted up and late and, and lost. Yes. So where are you calling from? So we're based in Boston, but we have a global footprint with one of our bigger offices being in uh, Kosovo and Hollywood, Florida, including Manhattan. Nice. Nice. Uh, Manhattan, New York or Manhattan? Ma- yeah. Uh, I'd love Manhattan uh, Beach, California, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, um, you know, being from Boston and the Yankees and the Red Sox, uh, it's Manhattan, New York. Yeah. And you're a Boston guy, right? I am a Boston guy. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so you mentioned Tive is this visibility um, solution. And by the way, a lot of people say visibility solution. I always joke that there's this spectrum because guys who say, I call the trucking company and we have an EDI that tells you when the truck arrived and a, tr- and a truck that tells you when the truck picked up. And they say, that's our visibility solution. And I call the driver every half hour or every hour on critical shipments, whatever their, whatever the spiel is. And they were called that visibility. Uh, and then, you know, obviously we have the four kites. We have all these different solutions. Uh, I know yours is different and better. But so tell me what is Tive doing that that is different and better? Yeah, so um, it, it's a good point that you make that, um, you know, whoever you talk to, whatever company, 3PL, shipper, um, customer, visibility means different things to different people. So for you, it might be just, you know, hyper accurate locations so that you don't have to keep calling your drivers. Um, It could be um, location and condition. So not only where is the load, but how is the load? Like how hot, how cold, how wet? Um, Did it have a shock event? Um, Did someone open it? Uh, Was there a security breach? Um, All that kind of thing. Um, So it's always interesting to know ahead of time, you know, what does visibility mean to that particular customer? Um, We have three critical components to our visibility solution. um, And I'll keep it real simple, high level. Um, First is we have, um, you know, industry award winning uh, solo 5G trackers um, that are the hardware portion. Um, And then we have a super simple UI. Uh, for customers and customers of customers to monitor loads in real time. And then the third aspect of our solution is live 24-7 monitoring around the globe. Right. So you mentioned a few things. So the, first off, your tracker is a physical tracker. This is uh, this is not, you know, pinging satellites. And I'm sure it's pinging satellites too. But this is a actual, like a size deck of cards, right? Yeah, it's about the size of a deck of cards. Um, It's got a sticky back on it. So, you know, um, you can uh, just peel it off, stick it on at the pallet or box level, and then hit one green start button and away it goes. Um, So it's always collecting uh, critical data on location and condition. Yeah. And I think um, this is a little different. I, and the reason I say this is because I've I've suffered with tracking in the past. So uh, everybody has. So uh, if you think about uh, when somebody says, yep, that uh, our tracking is attached to the ELD, the electronic logging device, you're like, cool. Do you know if my tractor is attached to the, uh, the, the, the trailer? Absolutely. Well, we're pretty sure it is. Yeah. We're pretty sure it is. And then you go, are you sure my pallet got onto that trailer? We're pretty darn sure it's on that trailer. 
That's the problem. I mean, and by the way, those are great solutions, but it's not the same as saying, I put this tracker on that critical shipment. And by the way, when we're talking critical, I know you guys do a lot of medical and pharma and food and stuff that this is mission critical. It's not new furniture. It is life-saving drugs. So I don't want to know my life-saving drugs are pretty sure on that tractor, I mean, in that trailer, and that that tractor is attached to that trailer. I, I, I don't want any. I don't want any maybes. Yeah, no, um, and 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 nobody does, and that's um, that's part of that. What does visibility mean to you? So we, you know, we do business with um, uh, critical cold chain tracking um, companies like um, Airspace. Um, or, uh, you know, BOA Logistics, um, or a few folks that, um, that are critical. Um, but one of the things that we do focus on is exactly what you were hitting on is, you know, um, body parts go missing all the time. So we have a blog article that people can look up on our website. It's called, where's my liver. And un un unfortunately it's, it's funny. Um, you know, it's a, it's a grabby, um, oh, title. Not if it's you, it's not funny. That's right. Um, but you'd be surprised at the thousands of, of livers and hearts and kidneys that get left literally on the tarmac every single year. Um, and globally it's got to be terrible. Um, but what we do is we ensure that, you know, that package not only is preconditioned with the right temperature, it's not too warm, too cold, um, but that it actually got on the plane. So a lot of our customers have said, you know, the plane took off because they have the tail number, they can see it took off and they're looking at the thing and it's sitting in a hangar or a warehouse or, you know, somebody's taking their lunch break and sitting on top of the, you know, the cooler that the, that the liver's in. Um, and again, it sounds kind of funny, but it's not funny to you and I if we're waiting on a liver transplant. Right. Well, or, or you know, during this pandemic, we recognize the importance of the drugs that saved lives, both the vaccines and the countermeasures. Um, if you're waiting at a hospital and you've got uh, people who need shots, um, the vaccine's one thing, but the, uh, the countermeasures for somebody who's potentially on a uh, ventilator, uh, pretty important to get those drugs where they need to be. And you know, the another thing you mentioned is traditional visibility, I shouldn't say traditional visibility is still relatively new, but if you look at the trackers we put into ELDs, um, great. I mean, it changed the industry, but the problem is it can't tell me if my stuff was dropped. It can't tell me if my stuff got banged. It can't tell me if my stuff was in a very hot, humid place, and it's not supposed to be in a hot, humid place. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, if, if you think about um, the amount of fresh, you know, perishables, food, uh, vegetables, um, fruits, um, a lot of times, you know, I, I, I joke with my wife, she'll go to the market and she'll, you know, she'll pick up some raspberries or strawberries and they'll look great and she'll get them home and the next day they're rotten. And she'll, she'll look at the shelf life date and she'll say, these have a, a date of next week, but look at them, they're rotten. And I said, well, the reason that probably is, it could be a number of different reasons, but um, in most cases, like you said, they either got real hot and then they went back to normal or they got real cold and froze and then they went back to normal. And we would know that because it's, it's real time tracking. So if we have an excursion of a really hot or really cold, um, uh, exception, we can let the grocery store know, or we can let the shipper know that you should probably dispatch a different load because those things are going to have a shelf life of like a day and you, they're going to get returned anyway. So you might as well send out a fresh shipment. Right. And you know, um, if you think about the entire cold chain and I've, I've, I've done a lot of, uh, training on this in the past, um, when the Food Safety Modernization Act came out, I did a lot of training for companies. And when when strawberries or corn or whatever is in the field, it's 98 degrees that day. So it's really hot. So they cool that stuff down. They take the that produce, they have a cooling process, and then it's in you know a number of facilities, cold chain warehouses. And then at some point it's in those trucks. To your point, anytime it gets heated up above, all of a sudden, all bets are off. So I said it's going to be good through next week, but surprise, surprise, it's not. And 
And, you know, if you go buy those strawberries or blueberries or whatever, it's always expensive. And I actually saw a napkin over at the store and it said, I just bought a head of lettuce. Should I throw it out now or wait till next week? And that is so true because I've, I'm always saying, I want to eat more salads. I bring all this stuff home. Um, I don't need any excuses not to eat salads. And But you wait a few days and you open it up and you're like, damn, it's not the same. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's true. And we've been, um, lately we've been taking a look at specifically shelf life. And what we're finding is um, some stats that say 80% of the demand for fresh fruits and vegetables is up regardless of pandemic or not pandemic. Um, but the shelf life has dramatically dropped off because port congestion, driver shortages, you know, a reefer that's been shut off to save um, gas sitting at the Mexican border coming over the border. Um, it, a whole host of things that can be solved simply by knowing, you know, where the truck is, what the temperature is in real time. And let's get in touch with dispatch and have the driver fix it. Right. You mentioned earlier UI. So that is user interface, right? Yeah. So we have a um, user interface that allows people to see multi facets of critical data like shock, light, heat, um, and obviously hyper accurate location. So at any one time, you have a dashboard that shows you not only where your stuff is, but how it is. This is the next this is the next level of visibility, what it is. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned real time. So will I, will I get notifications if this, let's just say I need this to stay below 45 degrees and it's creeping up from 40 to 41, 42. Do I get a notice that says, warning, Will Robinson, your stuff is getting hot? <laughs> yeah, um, two, two things about that. Number one, yes, um, we, or we, we can either set up the load, but we usually have the customer set up the load and they put in their own excursions. So if they're going to ship between, say, 37 and 41 degrees, um, we'll set that parameter. Or they'll, they'll set that parameter and they'll get a real time alert either by you know text or email or um, if our guys are looking at it, meaning our 24 seven monitors, they will take a look at it and they'll get in touch with the customer and say, you know, we're looking at a possible excursion. It's gone up five degrees in the last, you know, 30 minutes. Um, we did see a light alert go off, which means somebody opened the back. Um, it probably took in a big gulp of warm air. Um, so now the driver is going to need to adjust the uh, the temperature to keep those things fresh. Yeah, you know, I I ran across a story. This was years ago, and I will not mention names for <laughs> to protect the to protect the the innocent, but and the guilty. Um, there was a food company, and they told me about this that they had their own trucking division, and they said they were delivering like $70,000 worth of food. And it was supposed to deliver on a Friday and it didn't. And so somebody said, take this back to the terminal, make sure this stays frozen all, or I don't know if it's frozen or just stay cold all weekend. Um, whoever was supposed to do that didn't do that. And so Sunday night, these guys show up at work and they realize, well, look, we did. We just wasted seventy thousand yeah. dollars worth of food. So rather than call the boss and say, "Hey, Jim, you know the funniest thing happened over the weekend," what they did is they just turned it back on. And if you and by the way, we don't ever want to put anybody in that position because I don't want to be the guys. If I'm making, I'm working in this fact a warehouse, our terminal. I don't want to say that I made this mistake. Uh, so rather than getting fired, I say. I think the Tostitos will be just fine. You know, well, they'll be okay. So if I had a Tive tracker on that, I, I would have gotten a warning on Friday night when it started to heat up when you, and somebody goes, hey, did you, did you do that? Did you make sure that truck stayed on? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's precisely what the, um, uh, what the excursion alerts are for it's to pick up on a potential problem so that there's time to um to take you know reactive measures to either turn the reefer back on maybe the truck ran out of gas and the guy's asleep in the back or um you know maybe somebody opened the back to put something in it right. and it left the door open um so we can tell at any one time if there's infractions or you know excursions that um, are recoverable. So we like to say that, you know, we can, we, we can prevent shipment delays and damage 
because we can we can see what's going on now and probably predict what's going to happen. Right. So I know you work in pharma. I know you work in food. Anything like that, that mission critical stuff, the cold chain. What other what other crit- critical shipments and what are, what are some other sweet spots for you guys? Yeah. So uh, we just launched our solo five G pharma, um, which uh, is critical cold chain. Um, with, uh, you know, um, specially calibrated sensors. Um, so that's, that's one of the things, um, that's a sweet spot for us and then consumer packaged goods. And that can be, you know, anything from, you know, retail televisions, 55 inch screen TVs, laptops, it, anything that goes to Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Anything, anything that's, that's headed there. And, um, you know, the, the sweet spot for us is letting people know that there was a shock event and probably a lot of that merchandise could have been damaged. So when you shock event, that's like a big pothole or an accident or what? Yeah. I mean, we track, um, between G force. So, um, we try to filter out like bumps in the road and speed bumps, but anything over like an eight G or a nine G is probably not good. It's probably an accident or, you know, the guy or a gal driving the truck jammed on the brakes. Dropped on a sh- dropped on a shelf or something. Yeah, dropped something something fell off uh, inside. So we can um, we can track that right down to the box level that um, you know that that happened. And the other thing that 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 um, shippers like to know is, uh, or or the shipper would like to know who was in, who was responsible for the damage. So you know when they're going to file a claim. We can show them with a PDF report exactly what time, where it happened, when it dropped, and when it <laughs> dropped, which is critical. yeah. That, that's a good point. And you know, um, I, I, I've worked at a third party logistics company, and I always remember going through that where you go, "Well, it could have been. We could have picked it up. It could have been damaged when we pick it up. Could have been anybody." And yeah, and then who knows where? It, and you always have that he said, she said, and it really can be damaging to relationships. And, and I, I, you know, I mentioned, I'm not trying to make your case here for the ROI, but you think about that $70,000 worth of food that pays for a lifetime supply of dive trackers, but so does one missing one claim. If you said, Hey, it could be a, a load of electronics is worth millions of dollars potentially. And if somebody said, I'm not paying you guys and I, you owe me a million dollars for this damage. And you say, we can prove that it didn't happen on our watch. Yep. We, uh, we talk to people all the time that say, you know, we just put in a claim and we, we didn't get paid off because we couldn't prove, you know, who was actually handling the package when it dropped. And it was worth, you know, it was like a, you know, a, a camera, like a, a movie camera, um, that's worth, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. You put a, you put a hundred dollar tracker or $50 tracker or whatever on that, you know, that load and, you know, it, it's paying for itself. Well, and again, you don't have the, he said, she said, you don't have those poor relationship issues. So by the way, how much do those trackers usually cost? It depends. Uh, it's a subscription base. So um, if people are going to reuse them, obviously the price goes down, but on average it's between, you know, 30 and $50 per tracker. Um, but if you're going to, you know, if you're only shipping, you know, six loads, three times a year, um, obviously that, you know, that cost is going to be um, considerably higher. Yeah. But when you talk about a wasted load, one wasted load in 10 years, it pays for the, a lot of trackers. Yeah. We just did a case study. We finished up yesterday with Geotis and um, just one load, uh, I think was close to 1 million. I'd have to check my notes, but um, saving that one load was a million dollars. <laughs> and, and you're like, for for a fifty dollar tracker, guys, come on now. <laughs> I mean, you know, do do the math on that one. Yeah, and you know, um, I've also experienced this where uh, we are moving freight from way down in Mexico all the way to the northeast, um, Philadelphia, New York, and um, on a regular basis, millions of dollars worth of stuff, and every once in a while, stuff would show up rusted, and because uh, it was sheet metal stuff, and for construction stuff. And you can't get to a construction site and go, here's your million dollars worth of stuff, a little bit of rust on it. Don't worry about it. You only paid a million five for it. Um, it also was showing up dented sometimes, which was a problem. Because again, it's it didn't it didn't uh, it didn't cause it not to work, but you just sold somebody millions of dollars worth of stuff. They don't expect to see dents in it. But there was stuff that was um 
really damaged. And that long trek, there's like a lot of handling and you could never tell where it went wrong. So we put some, and the, also there were some rough roads down in Mexico. And people were saying, well, it's just the roads. Well, th- you take the guesswork out of it if you put a tracker on there and go, know exactly where these problems happened. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's wrap this bad boy up. So who's your sweet spot? Who do you guys normally work with? So we're uh, very heavy in 3PL and 4PL and logistics service providers. Um, That's where our sweet spot is. Um, And now that we've launched officially the, um, the Solo 5G Pharma, um, we are going all the way to the, uh, you know, the, the pharma shipper. So all the big names um, that are not only shipping things for, you know, COVID, but there's so many other things that um, need to be shipped in pharmaceuticals um, and pharma uh, life science um, products. So, I mean, those are the two areas that we're mainly focused on. And then we're very, very heavy in retail. Um, and, you know, again, when I think of retail and a lot of people think of retail, you think of clothes, shoes, you know, socks. Um, but let's let's not forget retail is also supermarkets. Right. So, um, again, going kind of cold chain, um, not critical, but cold chain for perishables is also considered retail. And I, I don't know what it's like right now, but I heard this um, a few years ago. A friend of mine from India said that. um 30% of the food that was harvested was never eaten. And and because they had cold chain problems and they had plenty of warehouses, but there were some reefer shortages. And you go, holy God, it, in this day and age, that's just, and so if somebody says, I don't want to, I don't want to spend money on a tracker. You're like, well, you don't mind throwing out 30% of your harvest. Right. It, it, it makes, uh, sometimes it makes <laughs> absolutely no sense, but um, yeah, we run into it all the time. It's, uh, it's, it's hardly ever a cost thing. It's, it's more that they're not, the, the shippers may not be used to where the technology has gotten to today. So moving from passive trackers that just sit on the load and collect data, and then you plug them into your, you know, USB port. Um, our stuff is constantly connected as long as it's not in the air or too far out in the ocean. Um, we are constantly collecting the data. And as soon as we connect to a cellular uh, network, we're downloading that in real time. Yeah, they, I think to your point, they, they don't even know that it's possible. That's, and that's, what, that's what's cool about something like this is you go, it is possible. And you, you're the big problem you've been, the he said, she said you've been having with your uh, 3PL, your carrier, your, sh- your uh, shipping company, it uh, can be solved for $50 a load. All, all <laughs> stuff going away, all stuff going away. <laughs> all right, Jim, thank you so much for taking the time. All right. Hey, uh, Joe, thank you. And uh, again, we appreciate you, uh, you know, having Tive on as a guest. Yep. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to your LinkedIn profile and a link to Tive so people can follow up and talk to you. That's awesome. Yep. And thank all of you for listening. I appreciate your support. Until next time, onward and upward. You've been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage in conversation with experts in the logistics field. For more details, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com or follow Joe Lynch on LinkedIn.